Welcome back. This week, performances continue at the Reynolds Thank Place you. Theater for Solstice, a winter circus experience. The show blends dance, theater, music, and circus in a unique storytelling experience. This is awesome. It's the first contemporary circus production here in the Triad, and it's being put on by the Arts Council of Winston-Salem and Forsyth County in Activate Entertainment Project. And the artistic director for Solstice is joining us live now, Houston Odom. Good morning to you. Thanks for being with us, Houston. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. You're welcome and congratulations. First, tell us what is a contemporary circus production if people, you know, aren't familiar. Yeah, so a contemporary circus production, unlike a regular traditional circus, it blends more storytelling and emotion with the acrobatics. So when you come to Solstice, you'll see not only the incredible acrobatics close to you, uh, but you'll also see um, a story there involved with characters and a theme and moody music and, and everything to create more of an environment, you know, rather than just being in a in a theater. We really want to get you out of your world. Cool. That's awesome. And to even think that it's such a process to go through, but we have to talk about creating the performance theme. That's going to be the common factor that runs all the way through the show. Yeah. Yeah. So for Solstice, we have a, a really unique story where uh, for us, it was important to talk about nostalgia and memory. And so it's a winter circus show, but we really wanted to touch on the fact that winter is often filled with that memory of seeing snow fall for the first time and, and all the other memories that are involved with snow. Um, so I think that's what sets us apart from, you know, maybe some other winter shows, but the story has become really beautiful, really touching, but you know, any age can enjoy it. So it's really awesome. Oh, that's great to know that it's a family friendly show, because when you're talking about these elements that are probably so interactive, mm -hmm. right? And like an immersive experience for everyone in attendance. What do you want people to walk away feeling, you know, when they're in their <laughs> seats, you know, adrenaline, excitement, what do you think? Our, our main goal for this show is we want you to feel like a kid again, everybody in the audience, no matter how old or young you are, we want you to walk out of that theater feeling, you know, like you did when you were, when you were a child. Awesome. And to pull this all off, we know that there have to just be a ton of performers who are all taking a part in all aspects of the production. Can you sort of explain what the dynamic is like for a unique show like this? Yeah, so we have uh, eight cast members and it's a blend actually of local artists and oh. guest artists from all over the country. So it's a really cool collaboration between the best of our local talent, which you won't even tell the difference between who's local and who's not. Um, and these artists from all over the country that some have really, you know, experienced training, went to circus school. Um, and so it's really nice to bring all these people together and have them work so closely. The cast is so close and it's only eight people, so it's very intimate. Oh, that's good to know. And if you can choose a favorite part, I know that's probably hard, but a favorite part for you of the show, because then it can be a little teaser for people before they go yeah. see it for themselves. Um, well, obviously we have, I have two favorite parts. One is our 20 foot tall Chinese pole, which has never been done in Winston before. Ah. Um, and so we're the first, it's one of the most incredible things you'll see in the show. But my favorite emotional part is we have an act that happens in the audience. I won't spoil what that act is, but if you're sitting in those first few rows, you might be two feet away from the acrobatic act. So that to me is really special. And, and one of the things that we're allowed to do when we're a, such an intimate theater, rather than one of your bigger, you know, 3000 seat venues where you're so far from the action. So true. And yeah. just the video that we're showing yeah. here on the screen, it looks so entertaining and impressive. Impressive. I mean, the talent. talent yeah. yeah. I mean, this is great. <laughs> and, and Houston, you are running for the next week. Is that right? At the Reynolds Place it Theater is. in Winston-Salem. Yeah, we have four more shows and there's okay. still tickets available for some of them. Uh, so please get your ticket now. You can visit our website to find tickets. But yeah, the first weekend went great. People are loving it. So we're just so excited to be here for another week. Great, I'm excited for you. And that website that you referenced, it is on the screen now for folks to take down. So you can get your tickets, head to activatenc.com slash solstice. Houston, yeah. thank you for your time. We appreciate it. I know it'll be another successful weekend. You know, that would have been fantastic to go to an indoor show this past weekend, mm -hmm. Jacqueline. Yeah. Yesterday sure. was just horrible.
horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and so we are so thankful that we are kicking off a new week on a nice dry note. Things are looking a lot better here over the next couple of days. We're really going to get a chance to dry out. Enjoy some warmer temperatures as well. As we're looking outside, live radar nice and quiet. Even as we pull back, you can see that we don't really have anything headed our way here over the next day or two, which is good because we've got a considerable amount of moisture out there. Greensboro, which is the official Piedmont Triad weather station, picked up an inch and a quarter of rain. So we're now about three quarters of an inch above normal for the month of February and over an inch and a half above normal for the year so far, which is a pretty decent surplus this early in the year. As we're looking at our temperatures, well, we didn't have much of a surplus there. 44 degrees was our high yesterday. We were about 10 degrees below normal. In fact, as we're going through the day today, I am expecting temperatures to be considerably warmer. In fact, they already are 46 degrees in Greensboro, 47 in Winston Salem. I will say the mountains could still have some slick spots out there, so be careful as you're headed outside for the next couple of hours. But as we head into the afternoon, temperatures get to the 60s for the triad, upper 50s in the foothills and in the mountains temperatures get to the low 50s, so pretty nice with more sun into the later part of the day and also winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour, which is actually a good thing in this situation because it'll help to dry up some of that wet weather faster. As we head through the next couple of days, we get to 70 degrees on Thursday. However, that's our next rain chance that's moving in. A couple of scattered showers possible on Wednesday, but Thursday into Friday, that's our next real rain chance that we've got coming our way. You'll probably be able to enjoy some of those warmer temperatures before it arrives, though. Here's a look at our hour by hour forecast. You see those scattered showers for Wednesday and then Thursday, that more substantial rain moving in. I'm not expecting to see rain totals quite as high as what we had over the weekend, but we could end up with quite a bit of rain during that time frame. It'll be wrapping up late in the day on Friday and then after that we will dry out again for the weekend. On this day in black history, 
In 1970, the New York Stock Exchange admits its first black member, Joseph Searles III. Searles was born in Asheville, North Carolina, and served as a floor broker before going on to become a leader in establishing minority-owned businesses throughout New York. WXII 12 is proud to celebrate Black History Month. A nearby university is honoring the legendary Tuskegee Airmen on every plane in the school's aviation program. Elizabeth City State University unveiled a symbol on their planes that honors an important part of black history. Every single plane in the ECSU aviation program will have the school's name and a tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen. And there were a group of more than 900 black military aviators who went above and beyond to serve the U.S. during World War II despite racial segregation. David Terrell, who served in the Air Force for more than 40 years, hopes that the road that the Tuskegee Airmen paved for other pilots of color, color will inspire others to take to the skies. If that's what you want to do, there's ways you can do that, whether it's through programs like here at uh, Elizabeth State College or whether it's programs in the Air Force. Uh, you may have to start low, but if you keep going, you can get to where you want to be. The tribute on the tail of the planes is only the beginning. They say each plane will get a complete makeover in the coming years. School leaders say the rebranding of 13 plays should be complete planes by 2025. Well, let's come a little bit closer to home now where several triad cities are now receiving a grant to study sidewalks. If sidewalks surpass are a good fit for their community. Greensboro is among the 25 cities selected to get part of this $2 million grant approved by the North Carolina Board of Transportation. Now this project's goal is to consider new paths that can be shared by both pedestrians and cyclists. A few other cities receiving the grants include Asheboro, Wilkesboro and also Boone. Today is the first full day on the job for the new chair of the North Carolina Democratic Party. The executive committee chose 25 year old activist Anderson Clayton for a two year term. She is the Person County Democratic Party chair and president of the state party chairs association. Well, Clayton did campaign on the need on the need for change in the party. This is after Democrats lost seats in the General Assembly in the 2022 election and control of the state Supreme Court. Clayton defeated incumbent chair Bobby Richardson. She became the state's party's first black chair back in 2021. Now for a place to call home, I'm introducing you to Kyra, who says at age 16 right now more than ever, she is in need of an adoptive family to support her. We walked through the Greensboro Science Center together where I got to know Kyra. I'm funny, I'm loyal, I'm intelligent, and I'm determined. Determination is something Kyra has learned early on. I'm proud of not giving up when stuff wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go. I pray and I think about my past and how far I have come to be something better than my past. She got a special viewing of the African penguin exhibit, which was her favorite, and we got up close and personal with Maggie the Iguana. Kyra plans to attend a HBCU and study criminal justice to become a family lawyer. Because of her upbringing in foster care, she wants to help families in a similar situation she's been in. I just want to be somewhere where I could call home and so I could feel loved and supported. And to help provide a loving place to call home for Kyra, the Children's Home Society of North Carolina wants to hear from you. You can give them a call at the number on your screen, 336-271-7989. All right, well, coming up next here on The Local Vibe, our next live guest is already standing by. Say hello. We are just a couple of minutes away from learning more about Triad Base Support Group, the Sister Circle.
watching The Local Vibe on the Triad CW. Good morning. Welcome back. So glad to have you here on The Local Vibe. And if you are just tuning in this morning, you're right on time for our next fabulous guest. So in honor of Black History Month, each day in February, we are featuring notable businesses, people, and events that highlight Black and African American culture. And this one is especially relevant today because it's Galentine's, Galentine's Day. Galentine's Day, women yeah. supporting women. <laughs> and the Sister Circle Incorporated is a community group helping to connect and empower women of color right here in the triad. And joining us now is Miss Leah McNair. She is the executive director of the Sister Circle. Hi, Leah. First of all, we love your energy and bright colors this morning. It's fantastic to have you on the show. It is great to be here. Great morning to you. Okay, so we have to start off first with the Sister Circle and how you all were created. What was the reasoning behind trying to create this support group here in the triad? Yes, ma'am, you will not believe this, but we were created in the middle of our pandemic. Uh, it was not intentional. It just kind of happened organically in the pandemic. Uh, we became a group of women that started out as a book club and budding from that book club came um, women who found a new purpose in fellowship and community and togetherness. And we decided to become a 501c3 organization that is committed to building one another and building our community. It gave us new purpose. It gave us hope in a sad time in the pandemic. And even now, post pandemic, we are still thriving, still moving, still impacting our communities because we know that strong women always build strong communities. And so that's what we're doing. That is amazing. And what a cool story. I don't think yes. any of my book clubs have ever <laughs> turned into something that incredible. So congratulations. Very cool. Um, and you spoke about making a difference in the community. How is Sister Circle making that difference? We have been able to do a number of um, outreach initiatives in right here in the City High Point and the Piedmont Triad as a whole. Even in 25 other states, uh, ladies have become a part of our initiative. We have small programs like our Blessing Bag program where we put little um, necessities in a cute little bag for uh, those that are homeless and less fortunate. We get out into the streets, we pass those bags out and try to be a blessing to those who need it. Uh, we've also hosted a job fair right here in our Sister Circle Center um, that our personal donations and the donations of our community have allowed us to get this center right here that I'm at. Uh, we've done a job fair there. We actually have a trade fair that's coming up for those that don't want to quite go the college route, but would like to learn a new trade. We're going to have a trade fair here. I mean, we've done so many amazing things um, that we can look back and say, wow, it has been a blessing to uplift those that we live with right here in our community. How can people get involved, Leah? Because if this is resonating with other women, they want to be supported by the Sister Circle. Tell us, what do we need to do? What is your message? Yes, to get involved, it is as simple as logging into our website, www the sister circle inc.org and as soon as you log on bam right there <laughs> <laughs> it says how to join you click that you join the sister circle by completing our census and you become a part of uh, the daily work that we are doing to uplift and that that is our that is our driving force it is our mission um, to build women mind body and spirit to build women emotionally physically spiritually mentally because I'm telling you it's all about the woman in 2023 that's what we say <laughs> and, and if you build women you build children you build men it starts with us um, and I think that focusing on women has really shown us that the woman we are we are the catalyst to change in in this world and so mm -hmm. we are because of that step by step brick by brick we're building the type of world that we want to see. 
Absolutely, Leah, and we just showed one of the pictures from an event. You all had, I, I mean, I couldn't even count how many people were there, all these women coming together. So what does it mean to feel like you're pulling in women from all walks of life, maybe to even incorporate their experiences as well? Does it feel like a shared network of experiences that helps each woman get a little better? Yes, it feels it feels like a network. Everybody is lending their gifts, their hands, their talents, um, their treasure. You know, we're all putting in everything we have to be a part. There's no big eyes, there's no little U's. Everybody matters in our community. And we want that to spread like wildfire, that women can love women and women can get along and women can do a great work. Um, when we put our minds to it, we can do it together. And that's what we've been doing. And that event was actually our yearly retreat where we come. We have classes um, that uplift us, um, that strengthen us and prepare us to go out in this world and just make a difference. So it's it's amazing. It's always every event is electric. It's amazing. <laughs> so well, I would love time, for but I yes. wanted to ask, we're noticing that you're very color coordinated in all of these pictures. <laughs> yes. What does yellow mean for the organization? We started with this color yellow because the book that we started with, which was a book I wrote 12 years ago uh, when I was dealing with infertility, I had been married 10 years and could not have children. And I wrote this book called 21 Days of Powerful Prayers for Women. Just something to uplift women every day, to make daily declaration, declarations and affirmations. And in the midst of writing that book, I was blessed to have twin boys, totally oh, unexpected. Wow. And so instead of one baby, God blessed me with two. And those boys are seven years old now, oh. Judah and Jordan. But that book started it all. And it, the book cover is yellow. So now we wear yellow all the time. Our closets are full of yellow. <laughs> It represents being the light of the world, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. being a light in dark places. And so that's why we wear yellow all the time. That's wow. Beautiful. Yeah. You are a beautiful person, mm -hmm. Leah. Thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us this morning on The Local Vibe. I wish we had more time, yeah. but for everyone at home to get involved with The Sister Circle, please check out their website. It's on your screen now, thesistercircleinc.org. Come on back anytime, Leah. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> All right, Jacqueline, yellow fits perfectly for the sunshine yeah, that we'll absolutely. see today. Yeah, not a lot of blue on radar, more blue in the sky and <laughs> lots of yellow sun. So everything's beautiful today. We've got live radar. Things are looking pretty good as we are headed into the afternoon. Staying dry, you can see that all throughout the region, things are clear for us. As we're looking at our rain totals from yesterday, man, was it a mess over an inch of rain in Greensboro and Lexington, over two inches of rain in Mount Airy and in Martinsville almost an inch of rain in Winston-Salem and North Wilkesboro and of course in the mountains and even parts of the foothills we had some of that wintry weather mixing in so uh, we need to dry some of that wet weather up. We'll talk about how we're going to do that coming up.
All right, we are just seconds before 9.39 this morning, which means it's time to see what's trending. All right. And the only thing that we have on our mind is a little bit of football yeah. here, of course, talking all things Super Bowl 57. And we just can't do the Super Bowl. Of course, there was a game that was playing during Rihanna's concert. Uh, there was some kick. sports happening or something, but mostly Rihanna. Rihanna was the, the main event, right? Right. No? OK, right. well, let's just take a listen so we can at least see a little bit of the stunning halftime performance. As your shadow crosses mine, what it takes to come I'm so obsessed. Like, this was amazing. And as you can see there on the screen, as they zoomed a little bit further in, there was a lot of speculation as soon as she showed up. And overnight, we did get it confirmed that the singer is pregnant. A representative for Rihanna has confirmed that she is now expecting her second child with rapper ASAP Rocky. The couple, of course, just welcomed their first child in May of last year. And many are already saying that Rihanna's performance will go down in history as one of the most iconic. She had a full set list of some of her most popular songs from over the years, including, of course, We Found Love, Run This Town, Umbrella, and the big finale, Diamonds. I, I mean, I know, Audrey, you didn't get to stay up and see the entire thing, but you went back and watched yes, it on YouTube this I morning. I did, after the earlier shows, I did, and I think, I have, I don't have one critique. Ooh, I mean, yeah. I really can't find it's anything. Flawless. I think it so is. too. I can't wait to watch it again after, yeah. you know, I've taken it all in now and yeah. I I'm ready to watch it again after it yeah. worked today. Yeah. And so what was your reaction when you saw her come out and kind of show that she was pregnant? I was shocked. I was like, there's uh, yeah. no way. And I was Googling, I said, is Rihanna pregnant? Yeah. Did I miss something? She so. wrote Twitter, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> congrats to her. And of course, congrats to ASAP yes. Rocky. We know that that baby will be beautiful and well loved. <laughs> yes. Well, speaking of the big game, of course, we know the other celebrities all also came out in droves to watch the Chiefs and the Eagles battle it out on the field. So let's go ahead and kind of look at our <laughs> spotted cam. Okay. So first up, we've got Bradley Cooper enjoying a chip. Oh yeah, he was the voiceover yep. on that <laughs> promo video before the game. Absolutely, <laughs> chips and dip for the A-list actor who was seen chowing down <laughs> there and cheering on the Eagles in a box suite there at the game. He got emotional at times, and I'm not talking about crying. I'm talking about like the angry, really? sort of emotional <laughs> yelling at the field. They would pan to him a couple of times throughout the game. It was really funny to see. Yeah. He also had a pretty cool Super Bowl commercial as well. So yeah. His mom, yeah. yeah. Oh, so go back funny. and watch it. It was yeah. for T-Mobile. <laughs> well, Adele also graced the crowd with her presence as well, enjoying a little drink there alongside her boyfriend, Rich Paul, who, of course, is most known for his sports management company, Clutch Sports, which actually represents LeBron James. Oh, and speaking okay. of the newly crowned all-time scorer of the NBA, LeBron James was there alongside his beautiful wife, Savannah James, as well. They were stunning the entire mm -hmm. game, looking so unbothered, by the way. <laughs> They're used to being the, you know, the, the athlete that has all the attention, and it's sort of interesting to see him take a back seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's probably like, oh, this is nice. This Let me is put nice. my feet up. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure she's finally glad that she can actually watch a game without him being on, on the court. And stressed out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they can talk and share memes on Instagram mm -hmm. and look at TikTok. That's what I imagine it is. Yeah. Well, to round it all out, Jay-Z was on the field with his daughter, Blue Ivy. There was no sign of Beyonce, but these two represented the family well. It also pictured on this picture here on the left is rapper Lil Uzi Vert. So he actually created the song that the oh, Eagles cool. walked oh. out to. He's a Philly native. It's called I Just Wanna Rock. So if mm. you saw people really jamming and dancing out in the sidelines, That's cool. the Super Bowl, like, you know how they score a touchdown? Some yeah. of their touchdown dances also incorporate the really popular oh, I Just Wanna Rock nice. dance. So, and not to make everything about Rihanna, of course, right. but Jay Z helped discover Rihanna, so yes. of course he had to be he there. He managed to see his her, yeah. he signed her, oh. and you know, he, he curates all of these halftime performances. Yeah, so she sort of had the layup to be able to. I mean, yeah. she, she's Rihanna, it was iconic for her, it was time for her to do it, right? Anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So, all right, so we got to move on to one final thing okay. that we all know about the Super Bowl mm -hmm. that gets a lot of attention this time of year simply because of money. We're always talking about money. It's expensive to go to the game, but you can also make a lot though if you bet on the right team. Mm -hmm. So we all know that one star always puts his money where his mouth is and talking about Drake, the rapper was out and about in Phoenix in, this weekend performing at an invite only concert. And maybe we can just guess that some of the money that he earned from the show went towards these massive Super Bowl bets that he made. Drake put it all in the line for the Kansas City Chiefs, correctly guessing that they would take home the title. He bet $700,000. Oh, and <laughs> the Chiefs being the underdogs, he ended up winning mm -hmm. there. That's it. You see it there on the screen. Mm -hmm. 1.4, almost 1.5 
million. Now, not all of the singer's picks, though, were winners. He incorrectly bet 25000 bucks that Travis Kelsey would be the MVP. He lost that one because Patrick Mahomes ended up taking the title. Guess what? He would have won $325,000 off of $25,000 if he had gotten that correctly. Oh my gosh. Mm. So I looked up the total of his bets. He made nine or it was either seven or nine bets. Mm -hmm. He only won the one, oh, the big one, the okay. 700,000 for well, 1.5. That's a big one. So yeah. he ended up still making a profit of something oh, silver into the tune of like $560,000. Okay. So, I mean, I did one of those box things for the first time, like with the, the numbers, you but yeah, the Super Bowl boxes and I lost $50 and I'm so sad about it. So I can't imagine. You know, <laughs> you know, we're doing big money bets. Like my boyfriend and I, we've been betting at home $1. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dollar Fifty bets. bucks was too much. I was out of my league. I did not enjoy that, and I'm sad today. The yeah. stakes are high. Yeah. Is it weather now? Yep, it's absolutely oh, time okay. for weather. Oh, we're going to oh. a break, I think. Well, yeah. righty, well, keep yep. it right here, everyone. We'll we'll figure it out. <laughs>